put those hands together around the building. Every praise belongs to God. Help me sing every every praise to our God. Every word of every worship. Word of worship one of every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Lift those voices. Every praise. Every word of worship, every word of worship is one of all. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. Let's take it up. Every praise, every praise to our God. Every word of worship, every word of worship is one of all. Every praise, every praise, every praise. Help me sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship is one of God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Let's take a little higher. To our God. Oh, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Mm -hmm. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, Glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's take it high one more time. Oh, every praise, every praise. Put those hands together. Every word of worship, every, word of worship one of every praise, every praise, every praise, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, is to our God. glory, hallelujah. I give you 
all the honor, every praise, every praise. Every praise. I came to give you worship. I came to give you my praise. Lord, I worship you. Every praise. I give it all to you. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God.
to you way oh my soul my soul says yeah Lord, Lord, Lord you made me you know all about me To your way, my soul, my soul, say Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth tis mount zion on the sides of the north the city of the great king the lord is blessing us right now I'll say it again, the Lord is blessing us right now. Well, if he's not blessing you, I want you to know he's blessing me right now. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. Amen. God bless you today. We welcome you to worship those here in person and those who join us virtually. It is good to be in the number one more time. Amen. Whether you're in the in-person number or the virtual number, it is good to be in the number one more time. Put your hands together in the house and in the response box. Amen. We've come today to worship. I said we've come to worship. We've come to worship God who is great and greatly to be praised. Anybody come to get your praise on today? Amen. Amen. Praise will lift your spirits. Praise will lift your weariness. Praise will make you feel better. And I heard a preacher, I heard a preacher say the other night, praise will even make you look better. So come on in here and let's praise it. Yeah, so we can look better. Amen. Amen. Well, go on and praise him. Go on and praise him. Amen. 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 Praise our God. It's been a long week. Yeah, but I, I've learned that if you praise him, it will make you feel better. And to be absolutely honest with you, I'm feeling a little churchy now. Feeling a little praise in him now. And if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. Yes. Yes, Lord. Well, somebody had a birthday. Praise him for another year. Somebody's been sick, but he brought you out. Praise him today. And then guess what? He woke you up early this morning. And I tell you what, if you don't have anything to praise him for, praise him for what he's done for me. Praise him. Bless his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, put your hands together and let's praise him. Oh, Oh, 
think about Jesus, what he done for me. When I think about Jesus, how he set me free. Come on, dance, 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 all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. Oh, when I think about Jesus, what he done for me. When I think about Jesus, high set me free. I can dance, 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 dance all night, 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 all night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Worthy. 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 Worthy is our God. Worthy. Worthy of the praise. Worthy. Worthy of the glory. Worthy. Somebody shout worthy. He's worthy. Didn't he do it? Won't he do it? Didn't he do it? You ought to give him praise because he's worthy. Praise our God. Let the service continue with the scripture and the morning prayer. Brother Trevor Owens Sr., will read for us this morning. Brother James Parker will lead us in prayer. We're praying for you today. We're praying for, this, for the prayer list in this church and for you who've called and texted and emailed and messaged that we pray with you. We want you to know that there is nothing too hard for God we want you to know that the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. God can do it. God will do it. God is able to do it. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Let the service proceed. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading will be coming this morning from 2 Peter chapter 3, just two verses, verses 8 and 9. I'll be reading in the New King Please James go. Version. Please, Please follow along and read with me with the version that you have. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse yes, 8. Yes, yes. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord... One day is as a thousand years, I see, I see. and a thousand years as one day. Yeah, yeah. In verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some yeah, yeah, count yeah. slackness, yeah. but is long suffering towards us, yes. not willing that any, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh, yeah. I read yeah, for you yeah, this yeah, morning, yeah. Second Peter chapter 3, yeah. verses 8 and 9. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers of his said holy word. Praise our Lord. Now that's all right right there. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right right there. Thank God. Eyes are closed. Thank Heads are bowed. Our Father, we come before your throne of grace one more time. We come before you, throne of grace, O oh, Heavenly Father, to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for another day, for another hour, for another moment. Thank you for this day that we've never seen before and that we'll never, ever see again. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing right now. And we thank you, Father, in advance for everything that you will do. Father, you're worthy to be praised. Father, you are the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega. You are which is, which was, and which is to come. Mighty Father, you sit high yes, and you sir. look low. Yes. 
the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus to share his blood on Calvary so that we may have the right to eternal life. Thank you, Father. Almighty oh, Father, we thank you right now for all the things, all the blessings. Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, right now, we just ask you to forgive us for all our sins, Please, whether they be omission or commission. Forgive us for all our trespasses, all those who trespass against us. Father, we just ask that you keep us in the palm of your hand. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, known and unknown. Oh, Father, we just pray right now to just bless each and every one of us in the blessing that we stand in the need of. One by one, name by name, need by need right now, Father. Father, we are praying right now for those who are sick and shut in. Those who are in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab centers, wherever they may be, Father. We are praying for them right now. We are praying for those who are incarcerated yes, yes, in jails yes, and prisons. Yes. Yes. Juvenile detention, sir. We're praying for them right now, Father. Yes. We are praying for families everywhere. Our yes. friendships, relationships, Father. We're praying for them right now. Some of them are looking for a breakthrough, Father. And right now, we look to the hills from which cometh our help, realizing that all our help comes from you, Father. Oh, Father, we just thank you again right now. We are praying over Heavenly Father for our pastor right now. Continue to wrap your loving arms around him. Anointed with the wisdom and knowledge to keep teaching and preaching your word. We are, we are praying right now for ministers everywhere, Father. We are praying for this congregation here at Pleasant View Baptist Church. We are praying for those who are worshiping everywhere in your name. Oh, Heavenly Father, all these blessings and others. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I've already been to the water. I've already been baptized. I've already been converted. Listen, y'all. I feel, I feel, I feel all right. See, ever since I've given up sin, hallelujah, I've been born again. Well, I've already, already been to the water and I've already been baptized. Already been baptized. Already been converted. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel all right. Ever since I've given up sin, hallelujah, been born again. Hallelujah, been born again. No, I've already been converted. I've been converted. I, feel, I feel, I feel, I feel all right. Ever since, ever since I've given up sin. Oh, hallelujah, been born again. Hallelujah, been born again. See, I stepped in the water. The water was a little cold. It chilled my natural body, but it didn't disturb my soul. I moved on out. Into the mighty deep, the water it came moving up around my feet. I went a little bit further, I moved a little bit further, I stepped a little bit further. It came around my waist. Let me thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. You see, He saved me. 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 He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He saved me. Now ain't you glad? He saved me. He saved your soul. He saved me. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Do I have a witness? One more witness. You see, I stepped in the water. The water was a little cold. It chilled my natural body, but it didn't disturb my soul. I moved on out into the mighty deep. The water, it came moving up around my feet. 
I stepped a little bit further. I moved a little bit further. I went a little bit further. It came around my way. Let me thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. You see, he saved me. 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 And he saved me. He saved me. I went down to the altar. He saved me. Got on my knees. He saved me. I asked the Lord me. to wash me, please. He me. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Well, I have a witness. Yeah. One more witness. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus. Jesus in the noon day. Jesus. I'm not ashamed. Jesus. To call his name. Jesus. For the name he saved me. Jesus. For the name he saved me. Jesus. He is a rock. Jesus. My sword, my shield. Jesus. He is a wheel. Jesus. In the middle of a wheel. Jesus. And is that that name? Jesus. Every knee must bow. Jesus. You might as well. Jesus. Jesus. Start bowing now. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Can I call Jesus? Jesus. Can I call Jesus? Jesus. Can I call Jesus? Jesus. 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 Something happened. Jesus. When I call Jesus. Jesus. Something happened. Jesus. When I call Jesus. 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 Now here is something. Jesus. The devil knows. Jesus. That at that name. Jesus. He's got to go. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. All over the world. Jesus. Every man and woman. Jesus. And boy and girl. Jesus. Something happened. Jesus. When I call Jesus. Jesus. Something happened. Jesus. When I call Jesus, 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 Let me thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. He saved me. He saved me. into the water, already been baptized, already been converted, and I feel, I feel all right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give these singers some more love today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. They've been on the wall with us during the pandemic. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Amen. 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 Brother Brian Pringle and these wonderful singers. Amen. That's right. That's right. Never get to the place that you're too big to commend others. Amen. 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 We praise God, but the Bible teaches us to commend one another. So let's go on and commend them. God bless you. Yeah. Been so faithful. Amen. Several of them have stood with us during the pandemic and I want you to know how much we appreciate you. Amen. 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 Making the service what, what it has been and helping to set the atmosphere for, for worship. And I don't know about you, but when I, when I go out to eat, since that's what most of you say I do, 
I'm, I'm interested in the atmosphere of the restaurant. Come on in here. Amen. Amen. There's a dear brother who's not here today who always talks about this pastor and restaurants and that they are on my speed dial, but what he fails to mention is that a whole lot of those times he's with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So if you're going to tell on me, tell on yourself. Amen. I see his wife is watching, but tell him what I say. Amen. That's right. That's right. Listen, so much is going on. It's a very busy time of the year. This week we'll be in our ministers and deacons and layman's union. Um, they've asked me to preach Wednesday night. Share with us Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It will be on Facebook Live. And then we are, we are approaching, uh, well, this afternoon, Pastor Hawkins' anniversary. Gethsemane and Pastor Hawkins, uh, they're going to have a service this afternoon. And I know how it is. He knows how it is. They know how it is. But they've asked me to come to preach. And listen, would you, would you please send an offering that this church may be represented well. And if two or three of you want to go to Gethsemane, that's fine. Love to have you there with us to share with them. This is a fellowship that we have had almost 20 years. And um, we want to be there to bless our friend and brother. Amen. And then, of course, our annual session for the Bethel Association is after the first Sunday. It's going to be headquartered here um, Monday through Thursday. The women will be here in prayer uh, Monday evening. All services are in the evening. Uh, we begin at about 6.30, and um, it, too, will be live. It will be virtual. It will be hybrid. But we want to have a wonderful fellowship uh, in, in the name of the, of the Lord. I'll speak to the association, to the state and the nation on that Thursday night, asking for your prayers. Um, this is 2021. I am looking forward to 2023 when we'll elect new leadership and others will take Take the baton and lead us higher. Amen. And I want to be a good past moderator by giving to support whomever my successor may be. I don't have to be out front to support. My record is I support whether in office or out of office. Amen. But then there is another project we have here. We, we've got to help Sister Kathy Strong. Amen. We don't want Sister Strong to be Sister Weak. <laughs> we got to help Sister Strong. Come on, Sister Woods, and make the appeal that we don't want Sister Strong to be Sister Weak. We want her to be strong. Okay, that is so right, Pastor. We don't want her limping. <laughs> now, you know that we do need your help. Sister Strong, you know, everybody know her. She just been to the water. <laughs> and she feel all right. But we need your help to support Sister Strong Amen. to bring back the towel to Pleasant View. Uh, there are forms out. You can be a sponsor. You can be platinum. You know that's platinum is straight. That's that card you got in your your wallet that's black. Uh, platinum, 125. Gold, 100. Pearl, 
75, silver 50, bronze 25, and of course we appreciate any donation. Now like in everything, you know we are colored concerned, color coordinated, and it's a royal affair. And when she is crowned on Monday, her colors are black and gold. And what we usually do, those in attendance usually support her by marching behind her. Pastor leads her in, and he have on a gold suit with a black tie. <laughs> and we, we will make a stand. We will stand out. We will be remembered. <laughs> Lucy going to shop for the shoes and the hat. <laughs> but uh, her colors are gold and black. And we will come, that we will march behind her as she comes and be presented. But that is on Monday. And we want you to come out and support her. But we really, if you can't come out, 27 was the deadline. But i do you one better. I'll take it as late as next Sunday. But please, please see me or Sister Marcia or Sister Kathy. So we can make your donation. Some has already done it. Thank you so much. We are all right, but we can do better. And so we pleading with you to please give your support, whatever, it, big or small, whatever, it will help. And so um, with that, just keep in mind that it's going to be streamed. If you can't come out in person, it will be streamed, and you'll be able to see it. So we have any questions, see me. Also, while I got this, you know, the women auxiliary are asking for registration. We do it every year. We have forms for that. The women's of Bethel who really support our moderator to the best of our ability and beyond. So we're going to ask that you register with the women. The forms are in the back. I have them there too. So Marcia has some and she'll take them, she'll get them, you can get them from her. And on that form, there's a personal donation to the Florida Memorial University. Our university need our help too. So we're asking that you use that little form there to make a personal donation. The church is going to make theirs, but make a personal donation to this university. And we'll be ever so thankful to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Woods. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listen. These dear women are not just running to be running, but these funds help us to do scholarships and to do mission work around the world. And so we need your help. And you know, sometimes when we know we give, we give better, amen? So we want to give support to uh, Sister Strong, Sister Kathy Strong one of the fine and faithful here um, in this church. All right, it, it, is, it is offering time. It is offering time. Even in the pandemic, the Lord has given us an increase. Amen. The Bible talks about how in the time of famine, that's in Genesis chapter 26. Isaac, Abraham's son, sowed in the land. And the Bible talks about how he reaped that year. There ought to be some folk here along with me who can testify that even during the pandemic, You've been sowing into the things of God, and God has given you an increase. Amen. Amen. In fact, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Amen. 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 And I could go on and on talking about this, but let me tell you today, you can't beat God giving. 
no matter how you try. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to make ready to give. Those in person will remember that we have given during the pandemic at the close of the service on our way out. Would you do that today? Would you pay your tithes and give your offerings today? Help us with Pastor Hawkins' offering. Help us with Sister Strong. Help us do the work of the ministry. And then those of you in virtual land, the information is on the screen. Would you please follow the, the prompts and please give. Share with us. You'll be glad you did. We will be glad that you did. If you aren't tech savvy and you want to mail your offering, do that. 1202 South Central Avenue, Apopka, A-P-O-P-K-A, Apopka, Florida. 32703. Now let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, thank you for demonstrating through the gift of giving your Son to die for our sins what it is to be the greatest giver. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And we are mighty glad that you did. As we prepare now to worship through giving, through bringing the tithes and the offerings, that there would be meat in your house, that your will, your way, and your word would be spread throughout this community, this state, this nation, and the nations of the world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would, as you blessed Isaac, who sold in the land during the time of famine, give us to reap an hundredfold. In the name of Jesus, let there be no lack among us Please bless our individual and collective financial needs. For we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And thank God. Let the church say amen. amen. The singers will sing and we'll hear what thus saith the Lord. God bless you. me, O oh, thou great Jehovah. God me, God me, O oh. Whoa, love, 
church, lift up your voice. Sisters, we also want to be in prayer with Brother Brian Pringle as um, they've had death in their family. We, we want them to know that we're praying with them. God is able to sustain and strengthen and to give comfort. And now let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, in Jesus' name we've come. As the deer thirsts to drink from the brook, we have come thirsting to hear a word from you. So please be pleased today to give your servants under the sound of my voice ears to hear 
what the Spirit says to the church. And bless your servant who stands behind this desk to preach with power, passion, and purpose to the end that somebody would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that your people would be strengthened and encouraged, and most of all, that you, our sovereign Savior, would be honored and glorified. For we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. God bless you today. God bless you. Amen. Please find Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians, Philippians chapter number 4. And I want to read verses 14 through 23. Philippians chapter number 4. I'll be reading again from the New King James Version of the Scriptures, but you may follow along with whatever version you have. Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 23. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things from you sent a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thus concluding this chapter and this book and the focal passage for the message today. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Repeat after me, no supply shortage with God. Say it again, no supply shortage with God. As the U.S. economy struggles to fully recover from the coronavirus pandemic, Supply chain disruptions across the country are driving up prices, 
can say amen right there. And leading to a growing shortage of goods. The supply chain bottlenecks around the world have caused record shortages of many products that American consumers are used to having readily available, from household goods to electronics to automobiles. Economists believe that there are several factors contributing to the supply chain shortages, including a growing number of workers quitting jobs key to keeping things running smoothly. A record 4.3 million Americans quit their jobs in August the most since the Department of Labor started tracking this data in 2000. You have a bunch of sectors that just pay minimum wage and labor is just going to veer over to where it finds the most profit. The Labor Department in July reported that the warehouse industry had a record 490,000 job openings. Companies such as Walmart, Target, and Amazon are going to great lengths to attract warehouse workers with attractive benefits, including free college tuition. With growing inflation jitters, many large retail employers are increasing their wages to keep up with rising prices intensifying the competition among companies to make their most compelling job offers amid the pre-holiday rush to hire workers. The American Trucking Association in 2019 estimated that it would be short some 60,000 drivers. But those shortages have increased due to retirements and new truck drivers needed to be trained due to COVID-19 closures. Brothers and sisters, there is a shortage of drivers and it is one of several issues contributing to problems in the overall supply chain. It's a good reflection of the strong demand for goods and everything consumers buy is delivered in a truck. Amen. At the same time, economists say large employers preparing to bring their staffs back to work in larger numbers had led to large purchases of bulk items. All of this looks bleak, but I brought some breaking news to worship today that though there may be a supply shortage in America and around the world with God, there is no supply shortage. Paul tells us in verse number 19 of this text, which is the focal text, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. 
Wish I had time to deal with, with all of these verses, 14 uh, through 23. But let me tell you in passing what Paul is dealing with as he writes to this church in Philippi. This, as of course you know, is a thank you note that Paul sends to the Philippians for their support of his ministry, especially as he is a prisoner in Rome. He deals with three things in all of these verses, and I won't have time to talk about all three. I want to zero in on just one. He talks about the beauty of giving. He talks about the bounty of God. And then he talks about the benediction of grace. Uh, but for this sermonic presentation, the emphasis is on the bounty of God. For brothers and sisters, even though there is a supply chain shortage in the world, uh, there is no supply shortage with God. Yeah, Paul says again, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I want to point out something here uh, in this verse uh, that really is a promise. But you've got to understand that all promises in Scripture deal within the context of some principle. Amen. Wherever there is a promise, there's also a principle somewhere in the neighborhood. And the principle in the neighborhood that serves as the foundation of this promise is that we've got to learn how to give. Amen. Amen. This, this promise is not blanket to just everybody. It is only those who are learning some things through giving. Yeah, yeah. So if you put this promise in verse 19 in its context, what it's saying is that as you give to others, God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. I know I just burst somebody's bubble. You ripped that verse out of scripture and you've been running with it for a long time. No, no, it is set in the context of the principle of giving. Praise our God. Watch God give back to you as you give to somebody else. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And then look here, look here. Look at how, how this, this promise uh, begins in the New King James Version with the conjunction and. And in the King James Version, it begins with the conjunction but. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. God is saying that he will provide our needs as we are involved in helping people or helping meet the needs of other people. Paul is saying, you, you have given to meet my needs. And in that context, God will supply all of your needs. 
You, you, you just can't take that promise out of its context and claim it. You have to put it where God puts it in his word. And God is not obligating himself to meet our needs unless we are involved in meeting the needs of other people. Oh, bless his name. This, this is one of the great promises in all of scripture. And it's a promise that, that there never will be any supply shortage on God's part. When we, when we remember to give to help somebody else. Help me in here somebody. God, God, says, God, God says that I, I'll supply your need. Now, now, the word supply means filled full. God, God says, I will fill to the full all of your needs. Amen. And David picked it up when he said, not only will my cup fill up, but my cup will run over. Is there anybody listening to me today who can testify within context? Not only am I a possessor of the promise, but I seek to fulfill the, the principle. Can I get a witness in here? And then even in Psalm 23, that's one of the benefits of the Lord being your shepherd. Can I get a witness in here? None of the blessings of Psalm 23 can we claim if we don't first of all claim that the Lord is our shepherd? Can I get a witness in here? And I think I need to tell you right there, if he's not your Lord, he's not going to be your shepherd. Can I get some help in here? If you want him to be your shepherd, he has to first of all be your Lord. And if he is your Lord, he'll be your shepherd. And guess what? You will have no supply shortages because the Lord is your shepherd. This verse, Philippians 4, uh, 19, calls our attention to about three, three things that I want to raise here today. F first of all, first of all, notice the source of our supply. The source of our supply. Paul says right here, my God shall supply. Now that's, that's a wonderful source. My God shall supply. We're talking about the magnificent, majestic God who will meet our needs. We're talking about the God who says, I own the cattle. On a thousand hills. We're talking about the God. Who's saying. That. That. That I have a. A fountain. That never runs dry. A God who says. I have a warehouse. That never runs out. God is saying. I've got a mighty ocean. To which. We can bring our tiny teacups. And. God shall supply all our need. Now watch this. The provision for our supply is based on the mighty power and the mighty wealth of God. And so some translate this verse as my God shall gloriously supply your need. Uh, some take that statement in glory and use it with the verb. The promise here is that God will meet your need in ways that will bring great glory unto himself. It tells us about the bank of heaven. It says he will supply your need. According to his riches in glory. 
Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That's the bank of heaven. Oh, bless his name. There seems to be a little uneasiness about the banking industry these days. And we never know what's going to happen with banks. And we never know what's going to happen in this world. We don't know if we're going to have a recession or a depression. And if all you're counting on are the savings and loans or the banks or the stock markets of this world. If that's all the security you have, you're in trouble. Yeah, but I got some good news for you. There is a bank. Oh, bless his name. And it's not headquartered in Fort Knox. There is a bank. And it's not headquartered, oh bless his name, on Wall Street. There is a bank. And it's not downtown Apopka. There is a bank. And this bank is in heaven. And it has never experienced a depression. It's never shut down. It has a bountiful supply. Uh, God's children through the centuries have been calling on this bank of heaven. And it, it is well secured today. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's good news, isn't it? That ought to cause somebody to be glad. That, 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 that God has several different kinds of accounts that you can draw on. Come on here with me. In Romans 2 and verse 4, yeah, it talks about the riches of his goodness. You know, you can draw on his goodness account. You, you're going to get it after a while. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, uh, Paul talks about the riches of his grace. You can draw on his riches account. And here it talks about the riches of his glory. You can draw on his glory account. Oh, bless his name. That is the source of our supply. God in heaven has committed himself to meet all the needs of our lives. The source of our supply is God. Oh, God, help me today. Maybe, maybe, just maybe the pandemic has caused us to rethink some things. Maybe we thought these jobs and social security, and your retirement check, you know, your pension, help me in here, was your source. Can I get a witness in here? Yes, sir, you got to understand that all of the above is a resource, uh, but not your source. Can I get a witness in here? Because you can live without all of them. But you can't live without God. Am I making any sense in here? Am I saying anything at all in here today? We've got to understand who the source is. Can I get a witness in here? Yes, yeah, sickness will cause you to recognize who your source is. And trouble will cause you to recognize who your source is. And can I get a witness in here? And when folk get to acting funny, as they sometimes will. Talk to me. Yeah, you'll find out who your source is. You'll find out you can get along without some folks. Talk to me in here. Am I talking to anybody? You thought you couldn't get along without certain people. Hallelujah. But you come to find out that you're getting along and you may be. You just may be. <laughs> getting along much better. 
Can, can I get a witness in here? You got to understand who your source is. Is there anybody in church today who will testify, preacher? I know who my source is. God he is my source. And then notice, notice Paul says, my God. Are you with me? He didn't just say a God or the God. He said my God. This God I'm talking about is personal. He's personal to me. Uh, do I have any witnesses in here? In verse 20 he calls him not only God but our Father. He says unto God our Father. God is the Father, watch this, of, of all of us. We are brothers and sisters in him. And God is the Father of everybody. Amen? Amen? That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but according to scripture, that ain't so. Amen. God is not the Father of everybody. Mm -hmm. He's the creator of everybody because he created us. But he's not the father of everybody. Can I get a witness in here? You know, Jesus said one time to a group of people, you are of your father, the devil. Do I have any help in the house? So you got two families in the world. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got some folk that's in the devil's family. Amen. The devil is your father. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? And you know some folk, don't you? Mm, I know some folk. Some of them may be watching me today. Yeah, your father is the devil. And maybe I've had on occasion to tell you that you are of your father, the devil. Oh, bless his name. But then there's another family. I said there's another family. And the only way you can get into this family is you got to be born again. Can I get a witness in here? And you know, you know the way you get into a family, you, 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 got, to have, you got to have a father who, who, who helped me in here, who has something to do with your birth. Can I get a witness in here? And the only way to get into the family of the heavenly father is by means of the spiritual birth. You remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? You must be, you got to be born again. If you've not been born again, you're not in God's family. Amen. I know we want church to be, you know, we want to feel good and we want, you know, feeling good sermons. But I've got to burst your bubble today. If you've not been born again, you're not in God's family. Can I get a witness in here? And that doesn't just apply to folks under the tree and on the corner. If you're in church, in person or virtual, and you've not been born again. You are not in God's family. You are of your father, the devil. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, the only way, the only way to get in the heavenly father's family is to be born from above. Yeah, it's only when you've been born again and saved by the grace of God, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, that you can say, my God. I wonder, is he your God today? I wonder, is he your father today? I wonder, can you truthfully testify without a shadow of a doubt that God is your father? Oh, bless his name. But then, brothers and sisters, not only do we see the, the source of our supply, in the verse we see the scope, the scope of our supply. Paul said, my God shall supply all your need. 
uh, the verse does not say God will supply all your greed. <laughs> Am I in the book? Yeah, yeah, God will supply all your need, not all your greed. Some people have the concept that God is just a cosmic bellboy. And all we have to do is just push a button. And he comes running to do service for us all. We send him everywhere that we really ought to be going ourselves. Help me in here, somebody. Yeah, before the pandemic, we loved to send him to the hospital. And by the sick, and they shut in. Amen. And, and by the nursing home, places we should have been going. Before the pandemic, we wanted God to go. We wanted God to go there. Kind of get a witness in here. And, you know, even where we were, we'd ask him to come by, but we didn't want him to stay long. Come on, you heard him say, come by. Even if you don't, if you don't stay long. Help me in here, somebody. Oh, bless his name. Yeah, some, some, people, some people have the idea, yeah, that, that, that God is a glorified Amazon. And that all you have to do, yeah, is, is get on the internet and put in your order. And it'll be delivered in so many days. And so I think I need to tell us that Paul does not say that God would supply all of our greed. But he says God will supply all of our need. And watch this. We are bundles of needs. All of us have needs. You might have quiet on that one. I said all of us have needs. All of us have needs. And God has committed himself to supply all our needs. Whatever kind of needs those may be. I think, I think that means that, that God will supply our material needs. Amen. We do have material needs. Amen? we got bills to pay. Help me in here. Yeah. Monthly bills. Yeah. And those, those months seem to roll around so fast. Can I get some help in here? Seems like you just paid the light bill. And here it is another light bill. Is either in your email or, or by and through the U.S. mail. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, you got shoes to buy. Hello? Got shoes to buy. Everybody came in here with shoes. I got shoes. You got shoes. Oh, God's chilling. Got, got shoes. Talk to me in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got shoes to buy. Can I get a witness in here? I'm about to come on your street. Talk to me in here. And you know pre-pandemic, you know, with some of you, your shoes had to match. Amen. Come on in here before I call your name. <laughs> shoes had to match. Amen. Yeah, we got shoes. We need to buy shoes. Come on. And listen, there's nothing wrong with matching. Amen. I like to see you look good. Amen. But, but that's still a material need. Can I get a witness in here? We, we, yeah, there's a need. Uh, yeah, dresses to buy. Mm-hmm. All of the sisters should have said amen to that. Dresses to buy. Dresses to buy. Can I get a witness in here? And y'all can stay in the store so long. Help me in here, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. And sometimes come out with one. One dress and sometimes with no dress. Amen. 
I got one honest brother back there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's born his burden in the heat of the day. Amen. We got dresses to buy and suits to buy. Amen. Three piece black suits, white shirts, and black ties and cufflinks to buy. Amen. But God has promised in this verse that he will supply all of our material need. I think about Israel in the wilderness. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And most people conservatively estimate that there may have been one and a half million to two and a half million of the children of Israel. You think about the shoes that had to be supplied. Think about the food that had to be supplied. And yet through all those years, those 40 years in the wilderness, the Bible says that their shoes never waxed old. Their stomachs never got hungry. God supplied the material needs of all this people. And if God can take care of millions in the wilderness, he can supply the needs of my life and your life on a daily basis. That's why Jesus said we are to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Day by day. By day by day. One day at a time. We call on God to meet our material needs. And so the Lord has committed himself in this promise to supply all our needs, our material needs, but then also our emotional needs. We've got emotional needs. Amen. We've got emotional needs. We are just a bundle of emotions. Amen. We've got emotional needs, and it's not just women. Men have emotional needs. Amen. You know, he's macho, and he the man. Amen. <laughs> Praise our God. Yeah, but he's got some emotional needs. We all have some emotional needs. Watch this. You need peace. That's an emotional need. Come on in here. You know, peace deep down in your heart. And Jesus said, peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, Jesus can give you a peace that passes all understanding. He can meet that emotional need. Listen, we have the need to be loved and accepted. Amen. Help me in here, somebody. The love of Jesus Christ is a love that passes all understanding. It's beyond all comprehension. He can fill our hearts with his love and with his power and with his acceptance. And then we have friendship needs. Amen. The Bible says there is a friend. That sticketh closer than a brother. Can I get a witness in here? We all need some friends. I hear you talking about I don't need nobody. Hear me. I can, I can make it by myself. Well you're living on another planet. You do need some friends. Everybody's not going to be your friend. But you do need, you do need some friends. I pity the person who has no friends. You're talking about somebody that's going to live alone and they're going to die alone because they're too mean to understand that they need some friends. Can I get a witness in here? And you know what? Since that is an emotional need, since we need friends, yeah, the Lord Jesus will give us some friends. God will supply that particular need. Can I get a witness in here? He'll give you some friends. Everybody's not after you. Everybody's not trying to take you down. Everybody's not trying to destroy you. God will send somebody in your life who will be your friend. 
Can I get a witness in here? Thank God for real friends. Thank God for genuine friends. Can I get a witness in here? Friends who, friends who will pray with us, praise us. Can I get a witness in here? And, and, and please don't, don't, don't think bad of this next statement. Friends who will cuss us out when we're wrong. Amen. Amen. You need somebody in your life who will tell you, listen, listen, no, no, dog. <laughs> no, dog. No, no, no. No, dog, not like that. That, 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 not, that, that can't go down like that. Can, can I get a witness in here? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I wish I had some real folks in the church today. I wish I had some real folks in, in my virtual congregation. These folks are quiet in here. Come on and help me out on Facebook and, and yeah, wherever I'm being heard. God will give you some friends. He'll put some people in your life. Amen. 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 And then guess what? We have spiritual needs. Amen. We need forgiveness. Can I get a witness in here? He'll supply that need. Can I get a witness in here? Maybe, maybe you have you broken the heart of those who love you. you. You've broken the heart of a holy God. You sin grievously and you need forgiveness. God can supply that need for forgiveness. And guess what else? We need mercy. I say we need mercy. I said we need mercy. Can I get a witness in here? Because if the truth be told, we deserve hell. We deserve damnation. We deserve eternal separation from God. We need mercy. And God has promised to supply that spiritual need, the need of mercy. He can supply all our spiritual needs. I've already talked about the source of our supply, the scope of our supply. And then let me look at the standard of our supply. Look at it. God does not commit himself to supply our need out of his riches, but according to his riches. Is that how that verse reads? You see, God doesn't give us out of his riches. He says, I will give to you according, according to my riches. What, whatever your need is, God says, just fill in the amount. I've committed myself to meet your needs. There's an open check from God to meet our needs, not our greed. But the problem is, problem is, remember, live in the neighborhood of the principle. Sow into somebody else's life and watch God pour back into your life. You can't, you can't lose helping somebody else. Somebody said, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then I know my living has not been in vain. And then the next thing, hey, about the scope of this, watch this is that we've got to learn how to cash the check that God has written us to supply all of our needs. I'm going to tell this story and I'm through. There was a man in deep financial trouble and uh, he got a check in the mail that covered all of his needs. He went home to his wife and said, here's a check that's going to meet all of our needs. And he said, you know what? I want to frame it and put it on the wall and come by and look at it every day. And then I, wanna, I want us to write a song and sing a song about how wonderful is this check. But his wife says, that's foolish. <laughs> Amen. 
Here we are in trouble. Here we are about to go under. Here we are on the brink of financial disaster and you got a check to cover all of that. You don't need to frame it. That won't do us any good. You don't even need to sing no songs about it. Care how wonderful it is. What you need to do is to go to the bank and cash it in. Well, that's what we've got to do with the promises of God. God says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the check. But you got to clash it. I said, you got to cash it. You got to claim it in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Here's a promise. Philippians 4, 19. It's a check from God. Oh, bless his name. His word is a check from Genesis to the Revelation. That's a check. Oh, bless his name. But you know what? It'll be no good unless you cash it. Anybody cast your check from God? Anybody claimed God supplying your need? Thank you, sir. There is no supply shortage with him. Even in this pandemic, he's been supplying all I need, hasn't he? Even with all that's going on in your life, he's been providing. Oh, I wish I had about six folks in here who will testify. Six folks on, on Facebook who will testify. He has supplied every one of my needs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, bless his name. I want to open the doors of the church. If you're here or there, you want to give him your life, or you don't have a church home, and the Spirit of God leads you to become a part of this great fellowship called Pleasantville. No now is that time. Leave your pew. What God put it in. Can do. Put it in the response box if you're watching us virtually. What he done for do it today. Us. Do it today. Do it He'll today. Do it for you. Cash your check in you Jesus' name. With arms wide open. Thank you, Lord. Would you step out He'll today? Would you step out on his word? Would you say, Lord, hear am I? He is no sea. Oh, bless God today. Bless God today. What God can do. Oh, it is no secret. It is no secret. What God can do. All right, all right, all right. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, son. God bless you. For you. With us, with us, why over? Here comfort, here comfort. There is no secret. It is no secret. What God can do. What he done for I know he'll do it for with us, with us. Why? Oh, bless you, his name today. Come on, church, let's thank God. Even during the pandemic, even during the pandemic. Oh, bless his name. 